Jesus begins preaching their synagogue. I think y'all don't understand it. And he came to Nazareth. This is his hometown where he had been brought up. And as his custom, as he went into the synagogue, it means ever Sabbath they did this. All while he was growing up. Everybody knew him here. He did this all his life. He went into the synagogue on Sabbath day and stood up for a read. He was chosen to read in the book of Isaiah. It's found in chapter 61, what we're about to quote here and read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah, or Isaiah, and when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. And again, it's in Isaiah 61, 1 through 3. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Here it is, because he got the moment me to preach the gospel. I'm a shout, I'm anointed to preach the gospel. He said, ain't that amazing? The first message Jesus preached. He preached about the Holy Ghost. He preached about the Spirit of the Lord. This is his first message. This is his first sermon. If you call it sermon, I don't even like these words, sir. How many people sit things you can find on the internet? You got to have a hundred pieces of notes. Come on, I'll have everything else to get all that. Amen. The message comes at the altar. Come on, church. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And, and, and here, here he is. Amen. He said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Somebody shout, the Holy Ghost is still on Jesus. Mm, wherever Jesus is, Holy Ghost is. And wherever Holy Ghost is, Jesus is. The two don't part. Come on, man. Hallelujah. He said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. So Jesus is preaching about the Spirit of God here. He said, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. That means the humble. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captive, and recover him sight to the blind, and to send them to the bruise. Here it is again, verse 19, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. We just sung that song earlier about it, that, that old song from Brownfield, the Spirit of the Lord. Amen. The sovereign God is upon us. Praise God. Amen. And we sang about that. But Jesus stood up, Luke 4 and 18, and he said these words. He said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, the cause means for this purpose. He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the broken heart. Here it is. To preach the liberty of the cat. The set of liberty of the bruised. Recovering of sight to the blind. And in verse 19, the priest accepted with you of the Lord. Three times Jesus said, the Holy Ghost is upon me. He has anointed me. And three times he said he has sent me to perform what it is I'm preaching. Hallelujah. Somebody shout, Jesus is still in the show business. Luke chapter 8, verses 1, the Bible said he showed the glad tidings of the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. I ain't talking about hell box office. You better know it as HBO, but he's still in the show business. He's still showing his word, demonstrating his word. That means Jesus didn't just preach his word, he performed it. Jeremiah 1 12 said he hastens, he, he quickly, amen, watches over his word to perform it. He still performs his word. Jesus said, I'm not just anointed to preach, but I'm anointed to perform what it is. I'm preaching. Hallelujah. Pay attention, my boy, at the camera. Y'all, excuse me. I to keep my health straight. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You know, people on the internet ain't going to be able to watch me when I go down there if you ain't watching me. Praise God. So watch me. Amen. In verse 20, and he closed the book and he gave it again to the minister. Somebody shout, Jesus closed the book. He fulfilled the book. He, he closed the book. Who did he give it to? Somebody said the minister, to the preacher. And he sat down. Boy, when I read that one, I read me and the Holy Ghost said, I gave you the word. What you going to do with it? No, I gave it to you. I gave you the word. What are you going to do with my word? You're going to believe it. You're going to declare it. You're going to say it as I say to say it. Whom I said to say it. How I said to say it. What are you going to do with it? What are you going to do with my word? And the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fashioned on him. And he began to say unto them, This day is this very scripture fulfilled in your ears. And they bear him witness and wondered at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. And they said, Is this not Joseph's son? Now let me tell you what's going on here. The people were used to, according to their tradition and their custom, they weren't used to preaching. You know what they were used to? In Matthew 7, verse 29, the Bible said Jesus spake as one with authority, not as the scribes of the Pharisees. That's what made the Pharisees so mad. Because all they could do was open the Bible and just read. Not the Bible, but literally the scrolls in their time. Amen. The, the law of Moses, they just opened it. Or the book of Isaiah, they just read. And that was their synagogue experience. They just read. When they got food, they prayed the prayer, they closed and they go. Look at neighbors. I think I've been to that church before. You know you've been to them. Just get up and read a few scripture. You no, know, we just saw a bunch of religious stuff like this maybe a month ago, right here in our nation's capital, and it was aired all over the TV. 
bunch of ceremonial stuff. Come on, somebody. America's really religious. Y'all didn't know that? A month ago, it proved it. Come on, somebody. A pope come to the White House, amen, and his main thing with his message was global warming. Come on, somebody. Him and Al Gore, that Democrat, must have been close friends. But I promise you, if a prophet would have came to the White House, somebody like Elijah, because Elijah was sent to Ahab, a backslidden king in his day, and he looked at Ahab and said in verse 21 of 1 Kings 18, How long shall you hold between two opinions? If God be Lord, follow him, and if thou be God, follow him. And he will be his leader. People say, well, we pray for revival. Pray for revival. Prayer alone ain't going to bring revival. Preach it with When preachers get right about the wrong, and preachers preach again, that's what brings revival. God! Jesus said, the Holy Ghost ain't on me just to have cute church. Just keep having a church. Go to church. One of the biggest things for revival is church. Come on, somebody. We can't cancel church long enough to have a move of God. I hear preachers all the time, Pastor Dennis. Hey, Amen. I've had them. I've had them in the last month. Hey, Amen. Well, we got this on our calendar. And everyone's calling me saying God's been telling them. Hey, Amen. They put me. Hey, Amen. And I said, okay, here's some dates I got. Well, we got this going on. And we got this going on. And we got going. Well, we can't. We just got too much going on. And yeah, and I'm thinking, yeah, you too churchy. You can't even cancel having a church uh, to have a move of God. Come on, somebody. And the Holy Ghost said that's what hinders me from doing revival, bringing a move of God. Because some people can't even cancel having a church long enough. Uh, they can't even cancel a class long enough, uh, a seminar long enough to have a move of God. Uh, when I give you a date, my God, and the Holy Ghost has been laying me on your heart, uh, my God, the dates I give you that I got open, you ain't got to pray and fast about it. That's God! Amen. Well, Sister Sam Faber, Brother Bucket Math probably won't be here. Well, this month won't be a good one. Man, I told my master of that. man, you're looking for the perfect time for everybody to come. You won't ever see God move. I said, quit counseling the people, trying to get their opinions. Go to God and what does he say? Go with it. Who you got faith in anyhow? The bank, the people, or the God you say saved your soul? Where was he? So the people were used to just somebody standing up talking. Just reading some scriptures. Pretty much it. Oh, John the Baptist, you know that prophet coming in? Uh -huh. His president, his king, he hollered out. Herod! Repent! <coughs> you adulterer! You sleeping with your brother's wife! Repent! The prophet would have been invited to the White House. I don't believe the coverage would have been the same. I don't believe the theme would have been global warming. I believe it's been a global warning. Here you go, Al Gore. Here's your global warming message. 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 10. God said, The day of the Lord shall come as a thief in the night. Come on, somebody. Where the earth and the elements therein shall pass away with a great noise and all the works therein shall be burned up. How's that for global warming? Come on, somebody. Amen. When in the Old Testament and knew a lot, when Jesus was even sent before we, amen, they, they were sent to call their leaders to repentance. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Many of them were killed because of Praise God. And in God's word in 1 Kings 18 and verses 1, God spoke to Elijah after three and a half years of drought and famine. He said, go show yourself to Ahab. And I'll see the rain. Rain is prophetic of the revival, the move of God. He said, preacher, if you preach to your leaders, if you preach on the sin of your culture, preach against it, the heresies in your day, and expose the ungodliness, preach, preach. He said, I'll send the rain. Or be no rain to the preacher's preach. That pastor friend called me. And that's my He's in church, y'all. He's not in the church, y'all. I used to preach for him in Tampa, Florida, where he passed there for a while. And uh, he goes to another church of God. I'm just going to say in Central Florida somewhere. He's got hundreds of members on Sunday morning. 
they had prayer, the prayer meeting on Sunday night when I had for hundreds of them. A pastor three years ago was told by his pastor to talk down during prayer time. Then he was praying too loud. If I remember old school Pentecost, if I remember the first day the church was born, Acts 2 on Pentecost, there were one place, one accord, there came a sound. Someone said, Sound. And there was a sound. They were so loud, people come from everywhere. Help. The church was born and she was loud. Psalms 86 and 5 said, Will you not revive us again that we may rejoice in thee? When the church is revived, she's alive. And I'm afraid, Pastor Dennis, they some, they some churches. Come on, somebody. If revival really hits that church and them, them, them sheep, them, them saints on them pews really get stirred up and revived, hey, some of these preachers are going to be out of work. Because they're going to be fired. Because when the church gets revived, their Bible stories. And an occasional humorous joke ain't going to keep them. Because when the church revives, they won't preach it. They can't hear from God. They ain't satisfied with nothing else. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Hallelujah. Praise God. And then those that want to stay there don't want to be revived. If you preach, you get used to it, they're going to leave you after a while. Come on, somebody. But every church needs to go back with their mind. Man. Come on, say, don't be disturbed. Praise God. Preach! He called me this afternoon. I was glad he called me. Listen, Lord, listen, Jesus, you know who he is. Listen, Lord. I had four dollars left in my pocket, but I still had to get home. This is between services here. You know that you go somewhere and preach, they usually give you a check. I mean, you know they, they don't see the check at the gas pump. Uh, and uh, I told my son, me and him we spent our last four dollars. I knew four dollars won't give much gas in him, but I prayed this morning, and I spent our last four dollars on a frosty. Mm. At Wendy's in Adel. Amen. So we ate that frosted by faith. And I said, So we have to believe God for some loose cash, at least a little bit. Come on, before we get to the house. Tonight. <laughs> My friend called me up. He said, Brother Marvin, I just sent you something. The Lord told me to send you something uh, to Walmart, to Walmart. I said, Brother, I know the one's at. So I rushed to Lakeland before I got here. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Amen. But, but, but anyhow, my friend told me while he was telling me about what he was saying to me, he said, Brother well, Marvin, the church this morning said, he said, Pastor again spoke up, said he spoke against all these preachers and saints that's speaking against, speaking out against Halloween. He was, he was talking about how good Halloween was. They weren't the devils and, and all this. It's just a good thing. Church got Pentecostal pastor of hundreds, hundreds of what God were in that day. Where so many in the pulpit have been slain. I don't point blame to no White House. Come on, or no politician. For the disgrace that America is involved in. In the depths of sin and wickedness she steeped into. No, I look back at the pulpits in the church house. Come on, somebody. For years, preachers with curves in their mouth and jellyfish backbone have been so involved in growing a church, amen, and getting this right here, amen, glory to God, and uh, retiring, and uh, amen, just living, and uh, making a living, having a job, just, ooh, the ministry's my job. Come on, somebody, amen, that they have uh, come into the pulpit, and they told people what they wanted to hear. They've become grace gluttons. They're making it's a great spills the airways on Christian television. Amen. 98% of it is trash and not truth. The majority thereof. And I'll prophesy here and I've been prophesying for weeks. And God's about to judge some of these stations. He's about to judge some of its leaders. Something's going to experience. Amen. Like Ananias and Sapphira. There's an Acts 5 coming back with the fear of God to the modern church world before Jesus comes. Something's going to drop dead. God said they've lied to my people. They have been ungodly in a sense that their message of grace produces lasciviousness. Chaining or two verses three, which presents the statement, a license or a permit to continue in my sin. Hello? Hello? Praise God. We need preachers. 
Jesus said this scripture is fulfilled today and the people got mad, especially the religious people. Because Jesus became a threat to them. Because when Jesus stood up, he didn't just read. He didn't just talk. He preached. He preached his own authority. And signs and wonders accompanied his words. Wonders. Wonders followed his words. 